when you read the Bible, do you have understanding? Do you have the skills to interpret the Bible? Can you apply the Bible correctly to your daily life? The Bible is God's word, but not everyone that reads the Bible understands. The Bible is God's manual for living. The Bible is profitable living. The Bible is a book of sources. Acts chapter 8, 31. Philip asked Ethiopian, you know, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I? Unless someone guides me, all you need to do is to search Peace Chapel Facebook Live. You can have the skills and proper interpretation and understanding to catapult your life to the next level. Peace Online Bible School is here to make you fall deeply in love with the Word of God. Join us this and every Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And you will be equipped for glory. Peace. Shalom. Moving in a mist If somebody leaves you and comes back and you just left me to marry and when the marriage got tougher and tougher you are coming back foul through men marry with their eyes whereas women they marry with their ears so when it comes to communication those of you who are wives be careful the way you dress in the night when my wife and i go into a uh, bed the way she dress her dress is trying to talk to me and so wives you must know that your body belongs to jesus and your own husband it's a sin for you to sleep with a strange woman apart from your wife if you say i'm not in the mood what do you mean if you are not in the mood he is in the mood now give it to him so you have about four billion women you are supposed to marry one the whole world is at your disposal don't make mistake why will you go for somebody's leftover don't go for leftover you are wondering thinking and seeking answers are you single married or in a relationship do you have challenges bringing up your children in the godly way do you have challenges in your marriage then join us this very saturday and every other saturday at 7 pm on family matters Peace Chapel, Facebook Live, and your family will take a good turn. Family Matters, redefining your homes. Amazing Web. Ebenezer! Ebenezer! The God you serve is a rewarder and a recorder. Revelation 22 12. In this world, Anything can happen to somebody. Therefore, if you are standing, be careful. Don't mind your mockers. Mind your God. Make Jesus your source. Don't make decisions without Him. Believe in God. If you don't keep your hope alive, you can never develop your faith. Yeah. Anybody who use any charm or witch doctor against you and your family, See. back to the sender. Amazing word. With Bishop Bright Michael Adolfo, this and every Sunday at 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. on UTV. Locate UTV Peace Chapel International at the Yamiche Junction, Okra, opposite Motorway Mother Care. Peace Chapel With International, so our Father's peace House. Peace. Shalom. Amazing Web. Glory, 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 hallelujah. It is another Monday evening, and Peace Chapel is here with. Peace Online Bible School, we are excited and we are prepared to teach you and to help you get a deeper understanding into the Word of God. Don't forget that it is a school. So as school commences, make sure you bring in all your questions, suggestions, contributions to the lecturer who is able and ready to answer. You, you can send your questions to 055-459-2569, 055 Four five nine two five six nine, or in the comment section below on Facebook. This is Peace Chapel, and this is Peace Online Bible School, and our lecturer, who is the president of Peace Bible College, in the person of Bishop Bright Michael Adolfo, who has trained thousands of church leaders, is here again today with the Book of Acts. Let us welcome him. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to come on your way. By the grace of God, that is why we are here. I want us to begin tonight with some prayers. 
We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, our Father Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, our Father Almighty. Great things he has done. Great things he will do. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done. We give you glory, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Our Father in heaven, your name is Jesus Christ. Even this evening, as you have gathered here, we are here because of your name. Nobody has ever taught the way you taught your disciples and us. And even today, as I stand before your people, millions of people around the globe, use me to bless them. Let Christ be seen, not me. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we all know that we began this uh, class, the book of Acts. Uh, we have done the chapter 1. And now we are in chapter 2 today, uh, verse 1 up to 13. Verse 1 up to 13. But before I do, let me do a big recap about what we did. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, the verses are, uh, already Acts chapter 1 has been there, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Let me do a big recap about that. And then we move forward to uh, today's topic. We have done Acts chapter 1, how uh, Luke, Dr. Luke, the author, continue Jesus' uh, work. From the gospel, Jesus was seen, uh, his birth, work, death, and resurrection. Acts is a continuation of Luke gospel to Theophilus. And he began talking about Jesus ascending, and that uh, Judas was replaced by Matthias. We've done all uh, the teachings, and we talk about uh, the, those who are, were waiting for the Holy Spirit. The proof produces, talking about the apostles, and that we dealt with chapter 1. Chapter 2, 1 to 13, there were three words that we learned the other day. One is Pentecost. When we begin chapter 2, uh, chapter Acts 2, Acts 2, 1, the first name uh, at the day of Pentecost, you hear that word, and then we, we have already set the record straight. When you hear the day of Pentecost in the Bible, it's not a church name. No. But Pentecost, as you all know, was a great day for the history of the church. Uh, the Israelites, they, they had three festivals. We talk about the Passover, the Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacle. And the Passover, after 50 days of celebrating Passover, Pentecost was celebrated. 50 days. And uh, God, who the best strategist that you can have, he knows what he was doing decided to pour the anointing on the day of Pentecost. Why? That day was a holiday. And uh, many, many foreigners have traveled to Jerusalem and Pentecost. By law, if you live in Jerusalem or around 20 miles away as a male, legally you need to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Pentecost because it's a day that they commemorate the law that God gave to them through Moses and also to thank God for the in gathered harvest. So it was prudent and incumbent for every Jew, especially the male, to come to Jerusalem. And when they came, millions of people, if you permit me, and the place was choked, and then they heard the cloud, and they heard a sound, and they also saw fire of tongues. And uh, they were like, what is happening here? And before they realized, to their amazement, uh, these ordinary people, 120 uh, disciples of Jesus Christ began speaking tongues. And this time, this tongue that they were speaking, everybody was able to understand their own language. So they were like, these people are Galileans. Why can they speak our language? And then Peter said, we are not drunk, as you guys uh, are thinking. It is what the prophet Joel said. So this is fulfillment of prophecy. And by that, uh, the people... Uh, continue to listen to Peter. So that's what we did from 
Acts chapter 2, uh, 1 to uh, 12. So today we are continuing from Acts chapter 2, verses uh, 13, verses 13. So let's begin Acts chapter 2, verses 13. And let's see what God has for us. Acts chapter 2, verses 13. This is free peace online Bible school. And in case you have any question, uh, you can send it to us for uh, on the WhatsApp 02, uh, 02, no, 0554, sorry, 0554, 0554, 59, 0554-59-2569. Now let's take today's reading from Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 14. Don't forget that the verse 13, uh, when the people heard the tongues of fire and uh, they began to uh, ask what can this mean? People were serious with Peter and the apostles. Other people too became mockers. But that didn't change anything. So let's see the preaching of Peter. Peter preaches to the crowd. So today what we are going to do, we want to consider, this is Acts chapter 2, verse 14. We want to see if we can go up to 44. But we are considering two things. The First, the first preaching of the early church. Yeah. The first preaching of the early church. And number two, the characteristics of the early church. So these are the things we're going to consider today, if time allows us. Acts chapter 2, 14, 44. We want to consider the first preaching of the early church. And then from, uh, I'm sure this will, be, this will take us from 14 up to 26, 30, 34. And then we see uh, from 40 up to the end of the chapter uh, how the church behaved. So let's begin from Acts chapter 2. So I'm reading Acts chapter 2 verse 14. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles, and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews, and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are zooming. Nine o'clock in the morning, it's much too early for that. No, what you see or predicted long ago by the prophet Joel, in the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people, your sons and daughters will prophesy, young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And now, of course, wonders in heavens above, and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke, the sun will become dark, and the moon turn blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. People of Israel, listen. Go publicly and endorse Jesus, the Nazareth, by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you all know. All right. And so, as you go through the readings, we want to consider the first preaching of the early church. How did they preach? And what was the content of the message? But before we go there, I want you to consider something. When the Holy Spirit came, men and women prophesy. So it simply means that from the scriptures, from chapter 2, verse 18, both men and women are qualified to be ministers of God. Both men and women are qualified to be ministers of God. Why? When the Holy Spirit came, there were male and female, number one. And number two, from Joel chapter two, which fulfillment was happening at Acts chapter two, 
the prophet said, in the last days, women of male and female shall prophesy. And by this, it simply means that when it comes to ministry, women and men are qualified to become God's minister. So we need to be careful anytime we interpret Timothy chapter 2. Either we need to apply it at all times or circumstances. That's number one that, that I want us to consider. Now let's begin with the first preaching of the early apostles. The early preachers, they went on to state that there is a proof that Jesus and all that happened to him is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. Jesus' crucifixion was not the consequence of a human plot, but the fulfillment of God's eternal purposes. The early preachers, when they began to preach, the emphasis, number one, was that anything or everything about Jesus crucifixion resurrection ascension and outpouring of the Holy Spirit was or where fulfillment fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. I want to take note of that. Whatever Jesus went through was no accident. Jesus' crucifixion, his arrest, it was an accident. It wasn't a human plot, but rather God was fulfilling his eternal purpose. And you can see this one from Acts chapter 2, 23. So the early preachers, the apostles, the emphasis that they made was about Jesus. And they were saying everything that happened to Jesus, anything he went through wasn't an accident, but rather it was prophecy fulfilled. It was prophecy fulfilled. So it simply means that to believe in the possibility of prophecy is to believe that God is in control and that he is working out his purposes. To believe in the possibility of prophecy is to believe that God is in control and that he is working out his purposes. The early preachers, the emphasis that they made was about Jesus. Take note of that. Number two, the early preachers went on to state that Jesus Christ has come and Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus Christ has come and he is the Messiah. So the early church had tremendous sense that Jesus was the hinge of all history. That was his coming. That Jesus' coming, eternity had evaded time. And that life and wealth could never be the same again. The early church, the early preachers, their emphasis was on Christ. And they were saying Jesus was the Messiah. And everything about him was a proof of the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. So tonight, what are you doing? If you are a man of God, the first question will be, what do you preach? What is the content of your message? What was your, the content of your message? As for the early preachers, all the first two statements I've made, I made a statement that Number one, the early preachers proof that Jesus, what happened to him, was the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. And number two, Jesus, 
the Messiah has come. And the Messianic prophecies are fulfilled. And the end of the new age has dawned. So the early church had a tremendous sense that Jesus was the hinge of all history. That his coming, eternity had invaded time. And that life could never be the same by Jesus' appearance to this world. The early preachers, they went on to state that Jesus had been born of the line of David. That he had taught. He had worked miracles. That he had been crucified. He had been raised from the dead. And that he was now at the right hand of God. My board may not allow me to write all this. The early church was sure that Christian religion was born or was based on the early life of Jesus. So, the 2, verse 13. The emphasis, number one, Jesus Christ was fulfillment. Fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Yeah. Number two, Jesus was the Messiah. Number three, Jesus came from the lineage of King David. I have about 12 points. I've given you three. All these points that the apostles preach about from uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 14, their emphasis was on Jesus Christ. So the first preaching of the early church was about Jesus Christ. And you and I must be able to emulate. So say, I'm sorry, now you're going to. Yeah, then they are preaching. The church is not about a man. It's not about any archbishop. The church is not about any bishop or founder or general of Asia. Christianity is not about Solomon. Christianity is not about David. It's not about Abraham. It's not about Moses. It's about Jesus. So number one, those of us who are preachers, when you are preaching, you may make an illustration from the Old Testament, but don't stay there. But rather, you got to know that Jesus Christ is the main character. If it is a video or a film, the other people like Abraham and the old Moses, they were just supporters. But the main character of the Bible is Jesus Christ. So let us focus on Christ. Elijah is a Moses can say, Yeah, Kenya is a Moses. Moses is a human being like you and I. So the question is that why is it that the first preaching of the early Christians or the apostles, the first preaching that they preached was about Jesus Christ? But today in our churches, some people major on oil, water, and kuto. And I'm so funny, I say. Some people too, they talk more about their church. As God blesses us as ministers of the gospel, let us learn from the early church. From Acts chapter 2. So in case you just joined this uh, program, this is free online Bible school, uh, courtesy Peace Chapel International. And I'm a, one of the uh, lecturers of this school. Also for the power of to be the CEO of the school. Also, for Vincent from U uh, UK is the principal. Also, for Adam is the vice principal. And uh, all the pastors and elders here, they are in charge, the board members. I'm just one of the uh, lecturers. And today, we are learning Acts chapter 2, 40 to 44. And we are considering, first thing, how the preaching was made by the apostles. What are, what are we doing? Why are you doing this? Because we want to learn. From the old timers. We are told from the Bible we should imitate what is good. 3 John 11. So if we are a man of God. 
Somebody is looking at me right here. <laughs> what is the content of your message? I am surprised to hear that some pastors, when they stand before their podium, they don't even mention the name of Jesus Christ. It is about them, about them, about them, about them, about them. Osofo, Onyaminipa. O preaching, I'll be preaching, no. I'm for Jesus Christ to home. So, I've given you three points. I'm going to give you 12 points about the first preaching of the early church. And I didn't get it from anywhere. I got it from Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 14, 44. One, Jesus Christ was fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. This is what the apostles preached. They were saying, when the people saw that the apostles were speaking tongues and they carried tongues of fire, when they heard them speaking tongues, that they were able to understand. Some of them became like, what's happening? They began even mocking them. Are you drunk? Peter said, no. This is fulfillment of prophecy. Meaning, Jesus' crucifixion was no accident. It wasn't a man that planned. But anything that happened in Jesus' life was fulfillment of prophecy. And number two, they were saying, the Jesus that you kill, he is the Messiah. They continue by saying, Jesus came from the lineage of King David. And I want to give you some points from there. All we are saying that the early church, they are preaching the embodiment of their message was Jesus Christ and his works. Now, what did they say about uh, David? They were saying that Jesus was born of the line of David. That's the third point I've given to you. That he had taught. That he had worked miracles. That he had been crucified. He had been raised from the dead. And that he was now at the right hands of God. The early church was sure that Christian religion was based on the early life of Jesus Christ. But it was also certain that daily life of the, early, the earthly life and death were not the end. And that after them came the resurrection. Jesus was not merely someone about whom they read or heard. He was someone whom they met and knew a living Jesus, a living king, a living presence. Now, all, what are we saying this evening? From Acts chapter 2, you can see the embodiment and the content of the message the apostles preach. The centrality of their message was Christ. They were more Jesus Christ-centered, Christ-centered messages they preach. What are we preaching today in our churches? Some people, when you listen to them, you love anointing oil more than Christ. Or water. They put people faith. Different thing. Also, there are some people today are Old Testament theologians. They believe Abraham. They believe Isaac. These people, although they were men of God, but they are not the main character. From Genesis chapter 1, to Revelation, every page you see Jesus Christ there. Jesus Christ there. So it's all about Jesus. So if you are considering Acts chapter 2, the content of the message that apostles preached was Jesus and his crucifixing and ascension and the king of kings. He is the king of kings. Everything was about Christ. So those of us who are preachers, let us appreciate Jesus and let us preach Christ and let us make people focus on Christ and not Abraham. Oh, can you can you someone say Abraham? Who bet my young fat to home? Bet with the Abraham, bet with the Elijah, but in Joe, who preacher in Joe, and Joe Abraham, Okra, Koyoso, who bet my can, who be asked about Bruba Koyoso, Koyoso Nesiano, and then number two in the Bible. If you want to learn something from the Bible, then don't learn from Abraham. No, I said, oh, Download, in other words, if you want to learn something, the first person to consider is Jesus Christ. That's number two, Jesus. Number three, Jesus. Number four, Jesus. Number thousand, Jesus. Number million, Jesus. All about him. The rest are just supporting actors. So the apostles, please, if you like, consider Acts chapter 2, 14 to 46, and look at the message. More about Jesus. So that's what we are doing today. So as you are preaching, 
you must be able to focus on Christ. Steve Manson, God bless you. David uh, Wadud, God bless you. Satasi Yadu, God bless you. Sofu Bwahi, God bless you. Kofi Miki, UK, God bless you. Osha Ray, God bless you. Gabriel, uh, God bless you. Isaac Mintase, Bishop. This is from Canada, I'm sure. I think the travelers were there to celebrate the Feast of Passover. And why there the Holy Spirit was poured as tongues of fire on the apostles as a, fulfillment, uh, as a fulfillment of promise by Christ. That's great. You're also right. Probably they came for Passover and they, but the surprising thing was that after 50 days, they celebrated Passover when Jesus Christ was at, that was the time Jesus was arrested. So I'm sure if somebody is a traveler and he has come to celebrate Passover, he is not going to stay there for 50 days. But I don't want to argue with you, but let's begin to reason. Since, uh, Pentecost was 50 days after Passover. So come to think of it. I have gone to uh, Kwewu for Bronya or Aflau, my hometown, Volta region for Christmas or uh, Easter. I don't think you are going to stay there for 50 days. But if you do, that's fine. So I'm saying, I just want to elaborate to your point. It is true. It may be true what you are saying. But I also, I also think that since Passover, our celebration had passed 50 days. Then I'm sure that Pentecost too. Well, it is also good that some people can also stay there because Pentecost was just around the corner. So now I have come to Jerusalem, let me stay here so that I can celebrate this one too. That's all important. Whatever it may be, the people were there. It was international holiday and God decided to use that day to bring the power and to start his church. And today we are benefiting. God bless you, sir. First is ISO is watching. Uh, Frank Jan, God bless you. George Asari. Uh, God bless you. You are here. And um, Pastor Yabua, God bless you. Florence, uh, Kotria is also watching. God bless you. Now let's go to the four points. So I want to take my time today to go through how the people preach, the content of their message. And what am I doing? I'm trying to let you know how it was done so that you and I can learn. Now, those of us who are believers, you are not a pastor, but you are a child of God. Any time you read the Bible, if you want to learn from somebody, don't learn from Abraham. No. Unless you didn't see anything about Jesus. I'm not saying you can't learn anything from Abraham. But Abraham is not the main character of the Bible. That's my emphasis. Because if you make mistake, you may follow some of these proponents of faith. And you err. Somebody has married 14 because he follows Solomon. Can you imagine? A pastor who has founded a church in Ghana has married 14. So, well, you know this pastor. Because he follows Solomon. <laughs> hey, you see, what did God say about Jesus? Matthew 3. This is my only begotten son. Hear him. Matthew 17. Hear him. So we, you are supposed not to hear anybody by Christ. And in case even Abraham, Isaac, Abednego, they did something good. Christ empowered them to do so. So the glory must go to Christ. Jesus is the one who empowered everybody, even before creation. He told uh, the Israelites uh, who met him, the Jews, from John 8. He said, before Abraham, he didn't say, I was, I am. Jesus said that one. <laughs> John 8, 50, 56. And then he said, John 5, Moses wrote about me. So the Bible is all about Jesus Christ. So if you're a Christian, you want to grow, please just look unto Jesus. Listen to what he said and learn from him and grow. You can look at Jesus and grow. Not any other person. Prince, Jadida, God bless you. Francis Kwesisaki, God bless you. Oheniado, God bless you. I can see many men of God here following this uh, program. God bless you. So what are we saying? Uh, set a seal, do prophet. God bless you, prof. God bless you very much for following this program. It is not bad. Don't get it wrong. When we are preaching, all of us, we preach, we make examples about Hezekiah, about this, about that. But the focus is Christ. That's what we are saying. And in case you are a Christian, you want to grow. Be careful who you follow. Don't follow Abraham. <laughs> you can learn from his faith. And even his faith, it was Jesus who encouraged him. Because Jesus said, Abraham wanted to see me. When he saw me, he was happy. Jesus became 
if you permit me, the lamp for Abraham to be okay, free. If, if not, Abraham could have killed his own son. So there's nothing wrong uh, learning some characters from the Old Testament. But my emphasis is that if the apostles preach mainly, largely on Christ, don't forget, that's what they did. They made reference of David. But they were saying Jesus came from David lineage. So those of us preachers, our focus might be Christ. You can give examples, but let us people and know that the Bible is not about any character apart from Christ. Because I look at the Bible and it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. He himself began teaching uh, the disciples from Amos. Uh, Luke 24. Luke 24, 30 to 38. From the book of Psalms and the prophets, Jesus from scriptures taught them about his life, about his death and resurrection. So the Bible is about Jesus Christ. And that's what apostles did. So those of us preachers, it is prudent on us to do so. The Bible is about Christ. And those of us who are young preachers, like my youth pastors, and the, when you have opportunity, let the people know the essence of Christ. So Peter Sample, for example, our goal is to know Jesus. Philippians chapter 310. Philippians 310. And the apostles did justice to this. And that's what we are learning tonight. This is online free Bible school. You can send your question to 0554 0554-59-2569. And you can also send your message to uh, Peace Chapel. And then I will read for you. I've seen any any other phone. It's also watching. It's interesting how sons are also uh, watching from this side. Daily preachers, number four, went on to insist that Jesus will return in the glory to establish his kingdom upon earth. In other words, the early church believed the second coming of Jesus Christ. So again, what are we talking about? Number four, the early preachers, they preach about Jesus's second Jesus second coming so they believe that Jesus will come again so the fourth point I've made from the early preachers they are preaching about Christ his birth his background his work his death resurrection ascension and his second coming today in our churches, I don't know whom I'm talking to, but some churches, Jesus second coming is, is uploaded, is, is go goes. They say, ah, heaven, they have the way. I'll be here, I'll say heaven. Heaven is saying, ha! Um, heaven, I'll call. Let us be mindful and be conscious that Jesus will come again. We are not going to live here forever. Anyway, after the apostles, they made sure that people will know that Jesus will come again. So the fourth point we are saying, they began by saying Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of OT prophecy. He was the Messiah. He came from the lineage of King David. And the fourth point I've just made, Jesus Christ will come again. So what are we saying today? As a preacher, you got to know how you preach. Focus must be on Christ. And don't forget that Jesus will come again. Steve Woodrow, thank you, Papa. Now I want to now I won't waste my time on the past prophets because I can't pray in the name of Abraham. I can't pray in the name of Abraham. Bad spirit will never move. Hmm. <laughs> it's interesting. Oh. <laughs> How that spirit will be. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> I can't pray in the name of Abraham. Bad spirit move. Okay, so let's say this is bad spirit. Abraham name move. He said the bad spirit will beat you. What's up? see. Wonderful. And I want God bless you. Kwame Sechi. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. So there's no way that you meet the demon and then you are going to mention the name of. Abraham. Okay, the few point about the first uh, 
preaching that the early church preached. The preaching finished. The first, okay, over here, the preaching finished with a statement that in Jesus alone was salvation, that he who believed on him will receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. Apostle Royal Jeffrey, God bless you. Please share this page to any pastor of yours. All those who are on the line, share this free online Bible school because I have discovered that the problem of the church is misinterpretation of scriptures. They are preaching, but the truth is that if the people who are preaching don't know how to explain the Bible, what, what are they preaching? So please share. If you love your neighbor, your friends, share this page so that everybody has part. All right. So the few points, we have made uh, four points about the early church preaching, and uh, we want to give the few points. Okay, uh, let me clean this one. The few points they talk about Jesus is the few points of the early church. They said salvation, salvation can be found only in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? This is the few point that we have discussed tonight. Salvation can be found not only in any other name, but the name of Jesus Christ. So you can never be saved through any prophet. No medium, nobody can save you. No prophet can save you apart from Jesus Christ. So those of who are believers, if you have Jesus, you have everything. Stay in Christ. Love him. And don't forget, Jesus Christ will come again. Now let's go to the sixth point. We are still discussing the early preachers and their preaching. They also preach that the cross was no accident. <laughs> wow. Chai. Early preachers, the cross was not accident. It was God's eternal plan. Eternal plan for salvation. Wow. So anytime it is Easter and people are crying for Jesus, please don't cry for Jesus. Oh. Cry for yourself. Cry for yourself. Oh. <laughs> Don't cry for Jesus. Not at all. Because the cross was no accident. It belonged to the eternal plan of God. Acts chapter 2, 23. Over and over again, Acts says this same thing. Acts, this is Acts 2, 23. Acts, Acts chapter 2, 23. The cross was no accident. Acts 2.23 Acts 3.18 Acts 3.18 Acts 4.28 Acts 4.28 and Acts 13.29 Acts 13.29 The thought of Acts saved us, us from two serious errors in our thinking about the devil of Jesus. The cross is not a kind of emergency measure flung out by God when everything else has failed, it is past God's, it is part of God's very life. I want to take that one again. The cross, it wasn't an accident. It belonged to the eternal plan of God. The cross is not a kind of emergency measure flung out by God. When everything else had failed, it is part of God's very life. So please, during Easter, don't cry for Jesus. God in his own way decided that Jesus must go to the cross so that you and I can be saved. You must never think that anything Jesus did change the attitude of God to men. No. It was by God Jesus was sent. We may put it this way. The cross was a window in the time allowing us to see the suffering love which is eterni eternally in the heart of of God. The cross was a window in time allowing us to see the suffering love which is eternally in the heart of God. 
Isaac Minta is saying, Bishop, God bless you for setting the record straight that Jesus is the main character in the Bible. Uh, Royal Jeffrey Godwin, he said, God bless you, Daddy. Bishop, your teaching is actually opening understanding and edifying us. That's all you want to do here by the grace of God. And please, anyone hear the sound of my voice, share the page. Share this program. This is online free Bible school. It's for pastors, church leaders, and every Christian. And even if somebody's unbeliever, you want to come here by uh, following us, that person will change his level. He can be a child of God because this is all about Christ. And tonight, it is Acts chapter 2, 1444. Acts 2, 1444. The first preaching of the early church. And we are giving you some of the points that they preach. They began by saying, everything is about Jesus. Jesus' life is fulfillment of prophecy. So Jesus is the main character. Yes, so focus on Christ. As a Christian, follow, focus on Christ. Trust him al alone. Learn from him. If you read the Bible and you, you, don't, you have confusion, listen to what Jesus says. Before you go to any other, even before you go to the apostles, unless Jesus has not made any statement, if it is marriage, what did Jesus say about marriage? If it is baptism, what did Jesus say about baptism? Hell, heaven, love, forgiveness, giving, everything. Go to Jesus first. Before you go to the apostles, unless Jesus didn't make any comment. We are also helping you to know how to Use the Bible. I go every other hour. Just put free, free, freely give me. And if you are being you know, here soon, go and join. Sorry, God bless you. I know you are listening. Vivian Ama, Mantibia, God bless you, Bishop, for the great job from Stephen. Thank you. Ah, uh, this is Max. Max, this is Max. Awesome teaching. God bless you, sir. God bless you too. All right, so let's uh, continue with that. So the sixth point the apostles made, the few points, salvation can only be found in, in Jesus Christ, right? Nobody, no Jesus, no life. No Jesus, no life. No Jesus, no life. No Jesus, no salvation. Number six, the cross was no accident. It was God's eternal plan for salvation. So everything you see about Jesus... It was no accident. God literally planned it. Number seven, the apostles preaching. They said that every okay, let's let's take this one again. In the book of Acts, they proved that the sufferings and death of Jesus were the fulfillment of prophecy. I think I've made this one, so let's uh, have already made a point on this one. So this is just reoccurring the point. The sufferings and the death of Jesus Christ were the fulfillment of prophecy. This is what the apostles preach. Sufferings and death of Jesus were the fulfillment of prophecy. The earliest preachers had to do that. To the Jew, the idea of crucified Messiah was incredible. Why? The Allah say, a hand man is accursed by God. So, to the Jews, to be on the cross is you are like you are a curse. And they didn't understand. So, to the orthodox Jew, the cross made it completely impossible that Jesus could be the Messiah. So, listen. When the apostles were preaching, their first audience were not Ghanaians. Though there were Africans there, there were some people from Egypt, from Libya, but their ultimate and the largely general or majority of the audience were Jews. And they were telling them, no, this is what your Lord says. But what your Lord says, cares, has become a blessing. So when you go to 1 Corinthians 1, you see that uh, they try to make scenario, uh, the wisdom of God and other stuff. I said, you are who you are, you are who you are, you are who Colossians 1, 1 Corinthians 1. But you are who you are, 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 
the early preachers answered. If you only read your scriptures rightly, you will see that all what Jesus went through was prophesied. So Jesus Christ went to the cross. And Peter and the apostles were saying, the Jews, you have your scripture, but you don't know because you don't read. If you have read your scriptures, you come to conclusion that what Jesus was going through had been foretold by your prophets. So the emphasis that ultimately Jesus was fulfillment of prophecy. So why you okay? BBS. Yes, Everything can be found in Jesus Christ. Acts stresses the resurrection as the final proof that Jesus was indeed God's chosen. Wow. Again, number seven. Resurrection of Jesus. Of Jesus is a proof of God's choice and when Jesus Christ right so the apostles continuing they spoke about Jesus' death and they talk about his work they talk about his background they talk about his death but more importantly they said Jesus' resurrection is a proof that Indeed, Jesus was God's chosen one. Acts had been called the gospel of the resurrection. To the early church, the resurrection was all important. We must remember this. Without the resurrection of Jesus, there will be no Christian church at all. At all. Without Jesus Christ, there shall be no, there can be no Christianity anywhere. So why are you preaching Abraham? Why are you learning from Solomon? Because you are not Solomon Nitty or Abraham Nitty. We are Christians. So, the resurrection of Jesus is the proof of God's choice. Jesus Christ. Again, they continue emphasizing on Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I don't know whom I'm talking to. Odivo. What is the content of your message? And as a child of God, when you go to witness, when you go to do evangelism, what do you present? Do you present, let's go to see my pastor. My pastor is the best pastor. My church, there's no sin there. It, 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 it is not wrong if you go to talk about your pastor. But look, don't, don't forget, go and speak about Jesus. 99% Jesus. When you have opportunity to talk about uh Salvation, Jesus. On the opportunity to witness to somebody about uh, heaven and hell, Jesus. And don't forget, with that resurrection, with that Jesus' death and resurrection, there shall be no church. So the emphasis must be Jesus. It's all about him. And don't wait till Easter before you talk about Jesus' resurrection. Listen, let me read this for you. And uh, you can find this on the YouTube and uh, Facebook, Romeo, God bless you. You are watching. God bless you. Romeo, sir, share this program to all your friends because I want people to be a part of this because we are all doing one work. We are all ministers of the gospel. In case you just join this feed, this is free online peace uh, Bible school. And uh, what we are doing now, we want to explain the Bible from Every chapter of the Bible, book by book, cover by cover, I began from Acts chapter 1, because the church began from the uh, book of Acts. And so we began from chapter 1, now we are chapter 2. And in chapter 2, verse 14 to 44, we are considering uh, the first preaching of the early church. And all the emphasis up to the 7 is about Christ. Salvation can be found only in the name of Jesus. So what are we saying? As pastors, apostles, prophets, church officials, let us focus on Christ individually. And let's also uh, allow people to believe 
on Christ and make sure that uh, we try to showcase or depict Jesus to our audience. Very, very, very important. It will help us a lot. Now, let's take this from uh, the statement I made. Resurrection of Jesus is a proof of God's choice. We must remember this. Okay, I've said that one. Without the resurrection, there will have been no Christianity at all. When the disciples preach the centrality of the resurrection, they were arguing from experience. After the cross, they were broken men. Their dream gone and their lives shattered. It was resurrection which changed all that and turned them from cowards into heroes. Wow. Listen. When Jesus Christ they arrested him and killed him. The, the aim and the vision and the dreams of the apostles were shattered. It was only the resurrection that brought back fire. So they were people who have experienced power. Hence, they spoke with that kind of zeal. Jesus and his crucifixion. It was the resurrection who changed all that and turned them from cowards into heroes. It is one of the tra 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 tragedies of the church that so often the preacher of the resurrection is confined to Easter days. Don't wait till Easter before you preach about Jesus. All the time, let people know that Christianity is about Jesus. Also, for Boseba Adam from USC, the deputy principal of online Bible school. I know you are too busy there, but you are there. God bless you, you and your wife and children. So tonight, we are still discussing the first preaching of the early church. We have done about seven. And uh, I'm sure the fourth one is, salvation can be found only in Jesus. The cross was no accident, number five. It was God's eternal plan for salvation. If you don't mind, you can bring the first four as well. Let's post everything there for you. But you go to this, uh, page, uh, this page, you can find everything. Restoration of Jesus Christ is a proof that God's choice, Jesus Christ was God's choice. And the seventh one, restoration of Jesus is a proof of God's choice. That's the number seven. So we are still learning how the apostles preach. My son. And the, as a uh, as you for the dick, I know. I'm preaching, you know. A yes, I'm going. If I show you, you can say, I'm going to say, what's him? The young man's with you know. Eh? You're the yes, I'm going to say. We are Christian, you know. Yes, why? I'm not going to say, you know. A babble. It's very beautiful. Yes, I'm going to say, you know. Learn from Christ. That's all we are called to do. Very, very, very vital. Let us learn from Jesus Christ. The last point that I will make on this, and uh, if time may allow us, we can tackle the characteristic of the early church. That's very simple. Because we want to finish the Bible page to page, cover to cover, to cover chapter by chapter, concept by concept. <laughs> I don't know whether we can do this, but let's see how God will help us. The preaching of the apostles, they also talk about repentance. They said, when repentance comes, something happens to the past. There is God's forgiveness for what lies behind. They were saying, Jesus saves. But when you repent, your past is forgiven. And when repentance comes, something happens for the future. You receive the Holy Spirit. In the power, and we can win more battles with the Holy Spirit around us. So, what are we saying? The emphasis of the apostles, their message. I have about 12 points. I've said only seven, but all the 12 points largely around Christ. They preach about Jesus. He is the Messiah, He is the King, Almighty. So I basically come through Him. Everything by him. And uh, they concluded by saying, 
the people say, what shall we do? Peter said, repent. And so, they, uh, they were saying, if you need Holy Spirit, if you want your sins to, to be forgiven, just repent, and your sins shall be forgiven. So, I want us to take this seven at least. Salvation can be found only in the name of Jesus Christ. The cross was no accident. Restoration of Jesus is a proof of God's choice. And the first four we, we also highlighted. Don't forget that one. We also said that Jesus alone the one that can save. And they talk about Jesus will come again. The second coming. Uh, don't forget. They also made emphasis over the second coming that Jesus Christ will come again. And they also made statement that early preachers, they said Jesus was born in the, on the line of David and he taught. He worked miracles. I've shared all with you again. And then they said Jesus or the Messiah. And uh, they want to say that whatever happened to Jesus' life was the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. So from all this, we can say emphatically that the apostles preaching based on Jesus. And we are saying, those of us who are preachers, let us be careful what we preach. Let us preach about Christ. Okay. And so we thank God for uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 23. Uh, we are, these are the things we have learned. Thank you, Chief. The first teaching of the early church was about Jesus after about the Holy Spirit. This is what they preach. Everything about Jesus, crucifixion, restoration, fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. That's number one. Number two, Jesus the Messiah. Number three, Jesus came from the lineage of David. Right. Uh, somebody said, what do you preach in your church? Okay. Jesus Christ must be the main character. That's a good one. So, this are the, and then you can add, salvation can be found only in Jesus and Jesus Christ, uh, the cross was no accident. It was God's eternal restoration of Jesus. It's a proof of God's choice. Now, we have some minutes. We are closing next 27 minutes. Let me use about 20 minutes to highlight some characteristics of the early church. If I go to Bible school, online, free, open to me, I have questions about the people who are making the camera. And I say zero five five four five nine two five six nine zero five five four five zero five five four five nine two five six nine. So we are going to the second and the last point for today. And please bear with us. I'll be happy. If you continue with us and you continue sharing this free apo, this is for pastors, for leaders, and for every Christian who want to grow in grace. And anytime you take the Bible, uh, if you want to understand, this will help you. So this is the characteristics of the early church. The character characteristics of the early church. Wonderful. One. It was, the early church was a learning church. Yeah. Hmm. The early church, when you look at the Bible from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. As to 42 to 47, you see that the first characteristic of the early church, it was a learning church. Hmm. It persistently in listening to the apostles as they taught. One of the great dangers of our church is that we don't learn. So the first church was a learning church. The, those who came to the church, they listened to the apostles. The apostles also began teaching them. Today in our churches, 
People don't want to learn. Bible studies, they won't come. All they need is prayer, 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 prayer. I'm a student of prayer. Prayer is good. But if you pray, you don't, you don't have the word in you. You are wasting your time. Yesterday in our church, uh, the preacher man preached that if you, want to pre if you want to pray for God to answer you, you must pray according to God's word. Pray the word. The early church was a learning church. That's not Christianity. Learn scriptures. Set it down with God. You must know God by yourself as a Christian who goes to church. Can I ask you a question? If Jesus comes now and he says, Connie, give me 55 scriptures and come to my abode. What happens? And you, a child of God. Call you. Are you a Mary? Peter? John? Kwame? What happens? 55 quotation. Chai. The early church was a learning church. Ni Laya is watching. God bless you, Ni. He said, God bless you, Daddy, for your sacrifices. Oh, God. The early church was a learning church. Yeah, we're the boy. Yes, we are the bad day. Yes, we are 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 bad we shouldn't waste our time, but rather you must settle down and learn from our pastors. And the pastors, let us get ready to teach. You know, Jeremiah 3, 14 and 15, Jeremiah 3, 14, 15, the Bible says, the Lord is, as I give you pastors, who shall feed you? So pastors, our duty is to feed the church with the message, with the teaching, with the preaching. You see what I'm doing tonight? Yes, anti asafono me can safono the church and your preacher chapel. I'm not talking to preacher chapel. I'm talking to all of us. A Christopher may pray and Pablo no more pay and Pablo no more make an. If you pray by yourself, that's fine. But this one here, they pray, but they are looking for somebody to pray for them. They don't want to learn. They don't want to study the Bible. It's wrong. It's an error. Let us learn from the early church. The first characteristic, it was a learning church. You can find this from Acts 2, 42, 47. So those of us who are members of the church, let us settle down, not go by ourselves, and learn from our pastors. And those of who are pastors, be pastors who can teach the word. Also, for them preach it here, one of them Ah, who preach in me and me. Eh? I didn't know who preach it. Oh, I have a hope. And we go program bit me fancy akra na and no see idea no no. Let us preach, let us teach the word. So in case you just join this program, this is Peace Online Bible School. For here, our goal is to know Jesus, and Peace Chapel, the tool is the word. And this boy talking to you, many years ago, God called me and uh, he gave me Bible. So I'm not doing anything strange, by the grace, this is what God called me to do. And I'm just, I'm not here to let you know I know much. No, I know a little. But I'm sure the little I know, if you add to what you know, it will help you. So let's continue. The characteristics of the early church. Number one, it was a learning church. Number two, oh, it was a, a church of fellowship. Wow. As you learn, as you read Acts 2, 42, 47, the first church, number one, they learned from the apostles. And it was a church of fellowship. What does it mean? None of them thought that, well, I know God, so I can serve God in my home. No. They were one accord. They stayed together. And because of that, because of their oneness and fellowship, the people around, there was some hour. A W E, the, the kind of fear 
that hit the township because the people were one. They fellowship together. Me nye corona varo ke minimum se sanko fo kwa soro bebere ya. Corona varo se nti and then nipa bebere gidi ato siom. Never deceive yourself that you can serve God in your home. And you ni babu bebere ya. In the Bible, even Jesus went to church and read the Bible. Luke chapter four. Jesus went to church, read the Bible, sat down for somebody to preach. Anyway, what are we learning from the book of Acts? It was a church of fellowship. Please, no matter your level, join a church. And if you go to church, be punctual. Hey, listen now, we are doing, I don't know who I'm talking to. This is international program. But Ghana, we are doing registration exercise, which is very important. Today, my wife and I went and did our own. And uh, I know most peace chapel members are doing it. It's good to do. But thank God, where we went, it was okay. But when you watch, you watch social media, you see people, most people, they don't even care about social distance. Some people go and stay in the queue for hours, which is not bad, though. But what I tell I'm surprised that if you can have that kind of faith and go and stay there hours to register, which is good, what about going to church one hour? You are afraid. Give me a break. Come on. The kind of chat that I sat on it today to register. Ah. Somebody just sat on the chair and left. Within a second, I was there. After me, people were just coming. Come to church. Every service, we pray. Oh, my God. You see, some people are not serious. They have excuses. But don't forget, your protection, your safety is not in your hands. Now, don't get me wrong. Go and register if you have not done it in Ghana. Go to work is important. Go to market is important. But don't forget, daily church. One thing we can learn, it was a, 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 a church of fellowship. Meaning, they stay together, praising God, study the Bible together. Please, we have challenges in our world. But for me, the way I see coronavirus, only God can help us. Let us look unto Jesus and stay together. Go to church, wherever you go. Be punctual. Don't allow COVID-19 to take away your joy. Nobody will kill you. You are not going to be affected by coronavirus in the church. Never. God is our source. Follow the head protocols and go to church. Well, I am, we are learning from the Bible. And uh, don't forget, as a preacher, I will tell you what is there. And then we do some application. That's, that's what they are doing. But at least you have heard from me that the early church was a, a learning church and also a church of fellowship. Gabriel Bodu, thank you. Anita Agrava is watching. Thank you. And uh, Gabriel Dodu, okay. Benita, George is watching. Jesus, Jesus, Inshraba upon. God bless you. Wendy She, God bless you. Wendy Shea, what is the name? Wendy Shea. Uh -huh. Wendy Shea is watching. Wendy, God bless you. Uh -huh. We are everywhere. I don't know why. You, uh, okay, my friend. This a uh, friend of mine from Philipp, uh, Philippines. Apostle Lito Calisto Sobidono is watching. God bless you. This is uh, Bishop Adolfo. This is online. Peace. Bible school free, and we are learning something from the book of Acts. And when they say, God bless you, you are watching. <laughs> I don't know why people are, you are happy about that, right? Interesting. We are learning. Okay, so two things you have learned from the church, please. Uh, the early church, the two characteristics, number one, it was a learning church, number two, it was a church of fellowship, and we are saying, Believers, don't stay in your home because of coronavirus. Unless, of course, your church say don't come to church. <laughs> but those of you, your church has uh, told you to come to church. Go to church. In other words, there might be a way of all of us coming together to fellowship. Kononia is very vital. Don't allow anything to take your joy from you. And don't think that you are too smart. So you are going to stay home and serve God only in your home. It is not there. 
Hebrew 12, you must never ignore assemblies of fellowship. There's nothing wrong if maybe one day because of some challenges, you want to listen to your, uh, your pastor on the Facebook, whatever. That's fine. But at least there might be fellowship. So we are learning from the uh, book of Acts, the character of the early church, a learning church. So keep on learning in the church that uh, they also believe in fellowship. And so we are saying, don't stay home. Make sure you join your church. And let's keep on fellowshipping God. And it will help us a lot. Let's take uh, the third thing about the church. It was a praying church. Wow. Early church. It was a praying church. Ha. Huh. When the church met, look, listen at the Bible. Uh, listen, when you read the Bible, listen to uh, the words from Acts 2.42. When they met, they learn from the apostles. They have fellowship. They stay together and they prayed. And because of that, there was no lack in that church. They were together. Fellowship. And power of God was available. And there was no lack. Today, when you, let's say, the church meet. And then they say prayer time. People don't want to come. Especially evenings. Well, if we are learning Acts chapter 2, the first church was a praying church. So every church, we must be able to have some time to pray. Very important. We pray with the members. What does it mean? If I go home and I pray for, by myself, there's nothing wrong with that. Stella, AJ Kwakwa from UK. God bless you. Sewa upon Ampia. God bless you. If I go home and I pray alone, there's nothing wrong if any pastor of our church, elder or member of the church pray uh, uh, alone, there's nothing wrong. But the Bible says two are better than one. Two are better than one. Very vital. That's the Bible. Two. Ecclesiastes 4, 9. One will kill thousand, two will kill ten thousand. Jesus said, if two of you agree to pray, something happens. We become multi movers if the church meet and pray. So as you are learning from the book of Acts, let it become a praying church. When your church organizes prayer, be part of it. Don't stay home and say, I want to pray alone. When we meet in the church and we pray, I have grace, you have grace. Together, we can catch fire. We can change. We can make a difference. So listen, my friends. The early church, they didn't have any degree holder. Even the senior persons were ordinary fishermen. But they waited for the power number one. And they were one. Oh! Hmm. Number four. There was oneness in the early church. Wow. When you read Acts 2, 42, 47, you see that the early church, they have everything in common. No division. Hey, they say, I'm sorry, Mo. I'm not speaking for one church. Division. Pastors. Division. Leadership. Division. Group. Division. At times, even members, we are fighting. That's why we don't see power. Yes. And of course, we go to church. But we, why was it that the apostles experienced ultimate power? Oneness. Jesus. They studied together. They were one. 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 Today, where is the oneness in the church? We are being divided. I don't know why. Because of grudges and bitterness. We can't forgive our, our, our brothers. And we call ourselves Christians. Where is Christ in us? Osa Christiana, God bless you. You are watching. Reverend Richard Yabua. He said, your son, Re Reverend Richard. Reverend, God bless you. God bless you. Share, share this page. And we want to bless uh, everybody. Characteristics of early church. There was oneness in the early church. Where is it today? Hey! We call ourselves Christian, but we can't stay together. 
in the church, we are fighting. Women follow us are fighting. Men follow us are fighting. And we have some things against people. We can't forgive for God's sake. And we are looking for power. Where, is, where are we going to get that power from? If you want power, let us learn from the early church. They learn from the apostles. They learn from God. They have fellowship, oneness. There was no division in the church. One accord. So there was no lack. Can you imagine? A church, there was no lack because they carried God in their side and they were one. You can take this to Genesis chapter 11 when everybody became one and uh, every culture, languages were one. God himself said, now that the people are one, we can't do anything unless we, we do something. When oneness takes place in a local church, power is inevitable. Let us stay as believers. Let's stop fighting. In the church, we are fighting. In the church, we are fighting. Whom are you fighting with? So my friends, if somebody has done something against you, forgive him. Forgive her. Let us stay in love in Christ. We are learning from the book of Acts. Prince Jadidia, God bless you, my father, my father, for this revelation. <laughs> Grace, oh, things are happening here, pa. We love God. Okay. We have some questions. Plenty questions. But let me finish this one. This is online Bible school. This is Efo, uh, one of the teachers. We are learning. We want to take the Bible every chapter. Every book, A to Z. Please, Mondays and Thursdays, 7 p.m. And you can go to Facebook. All you need to do is search Peace Chapel. And it's free for everybody. You don't need to be pastor to be part. Everybody. If you want to understand scripture, just join us every Monday, 7 p.m. And every Thursday, 7 p.m. By the grace of God, the little we have, we can share with you. So I want to finish this characteristic about, about the... Uh, Old church or the early church. Mm. Listen, because of the oneness of the church, that church, things were happening in that church. <laughs> wow. Every day, things were happening in the church. It was a church where Things happened. Wow. Unbelievable. Signs and wonders happening. Why? There was no grudges. No bitterness. No unforgiveness. No division. They loved themselves. So God proved himself. And power was inevitable. So if today we are longing for power, let's go to the basis. If we want power to be seen in our church, forgive each other. Let's stay as one people. Greek word called kononia. Fellowship. Philadelphia. We are like we are coming from one womb. So the problem is not God. God does not change his style. It is us. God is God. He can change. We have changed. How? We are not serious. It is humility that breeds unity. Without humility, you have no unity. This is from Royal Jeffrey Godwin. Yes, you are right. We don't humble ourselves. People go to church, they are too big. Who are you to talk to me this way? So they are in church. They are listening to the pastor. Everybody have different mindset. And at times, because of position and title, position and chair, people are fighting. Chair, where to sit, who to be the leader. Oh, what a shame. And this is all of us, including me too. It's a shame that we are fighting our churches. Well, this is the word of God to us. If you can learn, if you can humble ourselves and learn from the first church. It was a church that things were happening every day. Why? The fellowship was available. They learned and they prayed. Huh. Maybe let me give you the last three. Yes, last three. Last three. It was a worshiping church. It was a worshiping church. They never forget to visit God's house. Can you imagine? 
because of what we are going on, I want to, this one, they say I have some few minutes. Let me finish, oh, this one I will finish. In the name of Jesus. Please bear with me, let me finish, oh, this teacher will finish. Yes, I will finish. My force. Immediately. <laughs> Let's go. It was a worshiping church. Wow. Worshiping church. Yes. The early church was a worshiping church. <laughs> and all this you can see from Acts 2, 42, 47. What does it mean? They never forgot to visit God's house. We must remember that God knows nothing of sort of solitary religion. Things can happen when we come together. God's spirit moves upon his worshiping people. God's spirit moves upon his worshiping people. You stay in your house, I stay in my house, and we are, we are saying we look for power. It won't happen. Let's come together. Don't forget that where you go to church. Go to your church. It was a happy church. Ah. It was a happy church. I come here in my way. Happy church. Interesting. What, what are we saying? Gladness was there. A gloomy Christian is a contradiction in terms. You come to church, you are moody. You can't forgive your neighbor and you are looking for power. It won't happen. You are looking for signs. It won't happen. Let us forgive each other and be happy in the church. The prophet said, I was glad when they say, I should come to church. When they tell me that, go to the house of the Lord. Isaac, Debbie, is watching. God bless you. And somebody said, Daddy, please finish. Oh. Somebody said, I should finish. I am finishing, Mama. <laughs> you are right. I am finishing. Only Jesus can stop me. I am finishing. Thank you. <laughs> I have three minutes. Anyway, I'm not late. I have three minutes. Yeah, that I can't read the question. The questions will be read uh, Thursday. Thank you very much. We promise you 8.30. I have three minutes more. So, if I am still uh, on time. So, you can't fight me. No. <laughs> if, you can't, if you fight me, it's an error. Me pa. Yes, me pa. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, it was a happy church. It was a worshiping church. And finally, it was a sharing church. This early Christian had an intense of feeling for, of responsibility for each other. Hmm. It was said, anybody who comes, you, you need help, you help you. So, the last point, it was a sharing church. It was a sharing church. It was a sharing church. Huh. So tonight, what have you done so far? The book of Acts, chapter 2, 42, 47, we have learned about characteristics of the early church. It was a church of fellowship. Brothers and sisters. Division will never help us. Let's say take away gossiping, pride, ego, from our church, from our churches, and let's come together and pray. It was a praying church. There was oneness in that church. No wonder things happen in the church daily. They have favor before people because God was with them. Today we are looking for that power. How can we have that power if everybody stay in their homes? So in the name of Jesus, coronavirus, get away from our planet so that every church that is locked down will come back. Very, very, very vital. Papa Opon connected with you from Western region. Border to Ivory Coast. You are listening. God bless you, Papa. And time and also, Papa, Papa, so congratulations you, Daddy. God bless you, sir. A happy church. There was no problem in the church. People were happy. And they were, they were selling things together. And what amazing me, it was a learning church. They sat down for the apostles to preach to them. Today, people don't like studies. They don't like going to church. They have excuses. This is what the people did. That's why power came. My prayer for all of us, including myself, Peace Chapel and every church, every pastor, man of God, may our church be like this church. In the name of Jesus. The church in the Bible, in the book of Acts, also says, awesome church. My desire is that Peace Chapel get there. Where 
things will happen in our church. Signs and wonders will be order of the day. But for that to happen, as a church, we need oneness, fellowship, forgive each other, humble ourselves, and study the word, and pray, and love God, and everything will be alright. Wherever you are, if you hear the sound of my voice, may you have the same grace in your church. God bless you. Uh, this is Peace Online Bible School. I have done about 90 minutes talking to you. And if God permit, Thursday you come. Uh, keep on sharing this page in case you just came and uh, you, you met us almost at the last part of this teaching. Facebook Live, just search Peace Chapel. Everything is available. We began tonight by uh, telling you the apostles preaching, how the early church preached. And uh, they, they, they are preaching, their emphasis was on Christ. They said everything about Jesus was fulfillment of prophecy. They said Jesus was the Messiah and salvation comes only on Christ. Jesus' background from David, he died, he resurrected, and he will come again. The emphasis was that Jesus' death was no accident. It was God's eternal plan. And so we have said that all the apostles preached from Acts chapter 2, the emphasis was on Christ, was on Christ, was on Christ. So when you preach, please, don't talk more about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are not the main characters. The main character is Jesus. You can give illustration or example, but focus on Christ because the Bible is about Jesus. Let's love Jesus and as a church, let's stay pure and love God. Go to church in case uh, you have opportunity. And when you go there, smile. Forgive anyone who has offended you. Let's stay together and let's worship God. And my prayer that things will happen in our church as it happened in the church that Peter and the apostles were pastoring. If God permit, Thursday you come on your way with a word. And uh, you continue from Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, please. Those who send all the questions because of time, we are late two minutes. I'm going to give, uh, give, give you some time. Give God permit Thursday with all your questions. And please share this page, Peace Chapel. It's free online Bible school. It's for pastors, church leaders, and every Christian. And the principal is also for Vincent from UK. Also for Adnan is his deputy. And also for Karim is that he a CEO is also for Dapa. And the board here are the one who control the school. I am just one person, small boy, uh, one of the teachers. We have more teachers coming. If God permit and God give us strength, we are coming Thursday. God bless you. Don't forget, Thursday, 7 p.m. And Saturday, too, we have a family matters. Let's pray. Father, thank you. I humble myself to you. Help us to be like the apostles and help our churches to take away division and grudges from us. And let's love each other and stay in pure and oneness. And Father, cause revival in our churches so that every day something good will happen in our church. I bless all those who have opportunity to watch us. May God bless you and may God keep you wherever you are. In Jesus' name, Amen. Somebody leaves you and comes back. And you just left me to marry. And when the marriage got tougher and tougher, you are coming back. Foul through. Men marry with their eyes. Whereas women, they marry with their ears. So when it comes to communication, those of you who are wise, be careful the way you dress in the night. When my wife and I go into a bed, the way she dress, her dress is to talk to me and so wives you must know that your body belongs to jesus and your own husband it's a sin for you to sleep with a strange woman apart from your wife if you say i'm not in the mood what do you mean if you are not in the mood he is in the mood now give it to him so you have about four billion women you are supposed to marry one the whole world is at your disposal don't make mistake why will you go for somebody's leftover don't go for leftover you are wondering thinking and seeking answers are you single married or in a relationship do you have challenges bringing up your children in the godly way do you have challenges in your marriage then join us this very saturday and every other saturday at 7 p.m on family matters 
Peace Chapel Facebook Live and your family will take a good turn. Family Matters, redefining your homes.